Let's return to This Week in America. Here's your host, Rick Bratton. Welcome back, everybody. Coast to Coast, This Week in America. The highly praised Shadow of the Rainbow by Randall Lynn Zollinger shows the drama of being a teen and how difficult it is. The Hansons seemed to be a contented, happy family when the kids were young. Brandon, the oldest, was the perfect son, continuing the tradition of being a great athlete like his father and grandfather before him. The twins, Jaden and Jenny, revered their older brother and sought to emulate them. As Brandon started high school and the twins began middle school, things in the idyllic American family began to change. Picture perfect on the outside, the family was jolted when Jaden, who wanted nothing more than to please his dad and older brother, failed miserably as he began to discover his sexual identity. Live through Jaden's story in the shadow of the rainbow as he struggles to understand the ramifications of his father's haunted past and continues to forge on in his quest for the rainbow. Randa is a retired high school teacher of 43 years. She's played sports all of her life, including professional softball. For fun, she likes to camp, pilot airplanes, and bicycle off-road. Always up for an adventure, she once bicycled across Ireland. And Randall Lynn Zollinger, the author of Shadow of the Rainbow, is our guest on This Week in America. Randall, welcome to the program. It's great to have you with us. Thank you, Jim. Uh, I mean, Rick, that, that's wonderful to hear. I, I appreciate being here. Well, it's such an important story and a book so well done, Shadow of the Rainbow. Let's start by talking about the inspiration to write this book. What was the motivation for this? Well, I, I was a high school teacher for 40 plus years and I got real close. I was actually a PE teacher, so I was able to get really close to my students because you know, when you're out there doing sports with them and different things like that, you're a little bit more relaxed than you are in the classroom. So yep, yes. then after after class and stuff, they would come and talk to me about their problems that they would have with uh, peers and also with parents. And some of them just had some agonizing stories about how their own sexual identity uh, was not going very well with their parents and after hearing stories like these for years um, when I finally retired I decided I had a story to tell well and you do it so well and as you're trying to develop this story to come up with the characters that really sort of uh, explain to illustrate the the issues that you were hearing that these young people have to deal with how did you go about developing the carry characters for shadow of the rainbow well they really came pretty easy i have an older brother who played sports and brandon is the perfect older brother and brandon teases his younger siblings and my brother teased me um but um, Brandon was a perfect out athlete, which, um, you know, just in how the way I feel about things, uh, you know, I love athletes, but, um, the twins, my grandmother had twins, uh, when that were died prematurely, but I've always had a, a preoccupation with twins because of that. And I've been interested in them. So, and then I have known lots of boy girl twins, and every pair of twins, boy girl twins that I have personally known, the boy has turned out gay. And, you know, I thought that was fairly interesting. That's not any kind of statistic, <laughs> but, right. you know, it, it was uh, something that I've noticed in several, several cases. So, Jenny and Jaden became my perfect. Um, perfect representation of my idea about that. Well, the story and, unfold, un, unfolds in Shadow of the Rainbow. Randall Lynn Zollinger is our guest on the program, Z-O-L-L-I-N-G-E-R, published by Stratton Press, their website, stratton-press.com, a place to find the book, uh, other places as well. Information on our website, thisweekinamerica.us. So you, you have the main characters. Uh, how did you go about uh, sort of bringing these characters to life and, and telling the story? I'm going to tell you what, when I would sit down to write each day, I didn't have to think. It just, uh, the words just typed along like they were 
born themselves in my fingers, <laughs> so to speak. That yes. you know, sometimes I wouldn't even know what the characters were going to say until they said it. Um, and I've, I've taken some of my previous adventures or things that I have heard other people do and fun things in life and incorporated that in the book um, so that, you know, they had different things to do. Like I had Jade and Jenny go to uh, young people's theater and I was in children's theater when I was growing up. So I had an idea what that was about. And in young people's theater, it was the first place that Jaden had any place to learn any self-esteem for himself. You know, it wasn't competitive like sports and uh, it, he just was very fulfilled. And then he met his very first romantic partner at that time, although he had no idea what was going on. You know, he just had no idea what was going on. This all is in Shadow of the Rainbow by Randall Lynn Zollinger, our guest on This Week in America. Uh, what is the, the target audience for this? And I say that knowing that, boy, this is a book for young adults, a book for parents to read as well. Who do you see as the, the audience? Was there an intended audience as you were writing Shadow of the Rainbow? When I first started writing it, I was th definitely thinking it was a young young people's book but as i wrote it and it finished then i realized that parents uh yes. would really benefit from reading it and then i had a lot of my contemporaries read my book and they loved it and so you know I, it it's suitable for older people to read but it's definitely out there for parents and and i hope some kids can get some benefit out of it and, you know, try to uh, learn that, you know, maybe sometimes they could go to their parents or maybe their parents could learn, you know, I need to pay, pay more attention to my child because they're struggling and I need to know, you know, find out why. The book, as I'm reading the review, so many are saying, I hope there's a sequel. Are you planning a, a second or third version of the story, a, a, an ongoing series? Actually, there is a sequel already. It's called um, Promise of the Rainbow. Um, and it's, it's done. And uh, it picks up on the family's life when the twins are in eighth grade and Brandon in 11th grade and um, it it continues their struggles and their uh, triumphs so to speak through that book and then I started a third one but I haven't, haven't gotten through it you know how life gets in the no, way sometimes. yes yes <laughs> Well, the the two books, are, and this one is so well done, Shadow of the Rainbow. Randall Lynn Zollinger is, uh, is our guest on the program. Book at stratton-press.com, the usual places. Information on our website, thisweekinamerica.us. You really have seen this firsthand. Again, as you mentioned, 42 years in the classroom, substitute teaching, I understand, for 10 years. What changes mm -hmm. over all those years, all of those decades, have you seen in, in gay students? Uh, have you seen dramatic changes? Yes, I have. Um, you know, back in the 60s, I'm, I just started teaching in 68. And back in the 60s, no one was out and no one would dare be out. And, you know, it, it wasn't ever talked about. And, you know, I may be naive, but I don't know if kids even know, knew that much about it back then. And then in the 70s, uh, through the years, I would see the, the occasional guy, a boy that, you know, you knew he was gay or he was going to be gay, you know, and I try to, to try to lean towards him and make him feel good about himself and, and help him if he was struggling at all. But in the middle of the 70s, that's when Title IX was passed and they started girls' sports you know, across the board uh, in yes. schools. So then a lot of girls started playing sports. And then I noticed more gay girls a lot in the 80s. 
Um, not that all sports girls are gay by any means, but right. there are a lot of gay girls that find an outlet in sports. And then uh, in the 90s, or the 2000s probably, more than ever, more and more people were accepting of being gay themselves and of seeing gay people around them. Um, and I would see girls, you know, walk through the hall holding hands or walk each other to class or maybe give each, some, you know, each other a peck on the cheek when they would leave each other to go into the classroom. Um, and I didn't really see boys do that, but I would notice some boys that were just, you know, out and loud, you know, proud about it, but not too many. More of them were withdrawn. It seems like it's easier for girls than for boys. With us on the program is Randa Lynn Zollinger. She is the author of Rainbow, uh, Shadow of the Rainbow, book published by Stratton Press. Their website is stratton-press.com. Book available, of course, wherever books are sold. You've seen this firsthand. What do you think is the impact on siblings of gay kids? And you you illustrate that in the book with Brandon and with uh, uh, the twin sister, uh, uh, Jenny. What is the impact on, on siblings? Uh, a lot of times with the boy and the girl, siblings, twins, um, the girl is very supportive and protective of her brother. And it's like the opposite of what you think brother and sister, where the brother is protected of the sister. Uh, you know, in this situation, the sister is very protective of the brother. Um, but a lot of times they, if it's, especially if it's older siblings, you know, they're embarrassed if they have gay siblings, um, you know, and don't want to, uh, admit it or be seen with them or, you know, have anything to do with them. But, you know, some siblings are protected because it's their family. And I've seen, I've seen it both ways. Uh, you know, I don't, you know, he's my brother. I don't, I don't have anything to do with him. You know, he, he he's a fairy, but then, uh, the others say, you know, come, talk about my brother and I'll punch a face. in. <laughs> <laughs> the book is so well done. Shadow of the rainbow. Randallyn Zollinger is, uh, is our guest on the program. Let's talk about, uh, what makes this book different? I keep talking about the reviews and the reviews are excellent. A lot of books have been written, attempted to, uh, uh, to be written and published, uh, dealing with the topic, but yours is different. Why do you think shadow of the rainbow is different? I think it's different because it doesn't start in the middle of the teen angst. Uh, you know, poor Jaden had no idea as he was growing up why he didn't fit in with his family, but it started when he was four years old. My book started when he was four years old. And even at four years old, he felt different because he couldn't play sports like his sister and brother and he really wasn't really even interested in trying and he wanted to play house with his sister which she willingly did but she also wanted to play catch with her older brother and um he thank goodness he found a neighbor that lived across the street an older lady that saw him struggling and invited him over and would talk to him, you know, like a grandmother would, um, but let him be open. And she taught him how to, you know, work in the garden and to taught him to give himself some self, self esteem. And she taught him how to do some minor cooking and he would go home and try to impress his dad. You know, look, Miss Bonnie told me how to, took this and how to set the table and his dad was just roll his eyes and say I don't need another girl in the family or something like that and just shatter him but you know he knew that he wasn't accepted by his parents or his father at an early age um, and then he, he didn't even know what gay was and as he grew uh, through the years 
and was able to receive things, he would ask Miss Bonnie questions because he felt very comfortable with her. And she would answer his questions to the best of her ability for his age group. And he would be satisfied. And then when he'd get a little older, he'd ask something else. And eventually they started talking about families of two mommies or two daddies. And he was kind of getting more of an idea. The book is Shadow of the Rainbow. Randall Lynn Zollinger is our guest on the program, the author of the book. Stratton-Press.com is uh, probably the best place to go. That's the publisher of the book. We'll have all this information on our website. Do you think the reaction of Jaden's parents to Jaden's sexual orientation is typical of, of the parents of, of gay kids? Is, is that typical, do you think? I'm afraid it's too typical. I had parents of my kids, uh, you know, that I taught that felt the same way, although not all parents, some are a lot more supportive, but I'd say those are on the, the minor side. Um, and the ones that are not accepted, uh, accepting are, you know, on the majority. Um, uh, but that's just an opinion of mine. You know, there's no statistics there just from what I've been through, but you know, all kids need supportive parents. I don't, you know, being a kid is hard enough. And when you go and going through the angst of being a teenager and going through puberty and adolescence, you need a supportive parent. And if you are uh, going through trying to find out what your sexual identity is in addition, then it's really rough for somebody that has no support. One word that comes to mind as you read Shadow of the Rainbow is communication on both ends. The the child and in talking to family members, to parents, parents talking to child. Is that one of the the keys, maybe the most important key in, in developing this relationship? I think communication is the key to developing all relationships, but especially between a parent and a child. But sometimes a child just doesn't feel comfortable talking to their parent about it. Um, and especially if a parent has kind of belittled them, you know, for the way they acted when they were young and knew no better, didn't know how to act to please dad or something like that. And then yes. it gets you, makes you really reluctant to reveal anything about yourself. But communication is definitely the key. And if you can find someone like Jaden found Miss Bonnie, that you can talk to, then that can keep you from being one of those kids that goes out and commits suicide. Well, and that's interesting because that's a thought that goes through minds of, of the young people. I mean, Jaden was dealing with that as well. As well. Talk about thoughts of, of suicide. Yes. You know, that's the worst thing because these kids need to realize that this too will pass, but it doesn't seem like it when you are a teenager that anything that's horrible going on in your life is going to pass. And it takes some maturity to get through that stage of your life. And you really can't do that without some kind of support. So one of the reasons I wrote the book was to try to, spare some people some heartache to realize they're not alone in the way that they feel and others out there like them and they can make it through in promise of the rainbow you know Jaden found that he could get through uh, a suicide attempt and that maybe some parent could read it and see what their kid is going through that they're not realizing and that you know, it's too late when they've already committed suicide and like, what did I do wrong? Why? What happened here? Try to approach their child before it gets too bad. A couple minutes left where the time has gone by so quickly. What what is your hope? The the result of your writing Shadow with the Rainbow and the the sequel to that and and people reading it. What do you hope the, the takeaway is after people read your your series? Well, 
for one thing, I hope they, you know, enjoy reading the books because I write them the way I enjoy them. And I hope that it's enjoyable for them. But I hope they can take away the message that everybody deserves to be loved and considered. It doesn't matter if you're gay, straight, or purple. Everybody deserves consideration and to be heard and to be loved. And if only one person could take in something from this book that would help them feel more loved or one parent could try to explore what's going on with them, chi- their child and make them not go through this alone, then I will feel like that the book was a success. This book that we're talking about specifically today is Shadow of the Rainbow. The follow-up is Promise of the Rainbow. The author is Randall Lynn Zollinger, that's Z-O-L-L-I-N-G-E-R, published by Stratton Press, the website stratton-press.com. When do you think that, no pressure, but when do you think the third book might be out in the uh, in the series? <laughs> well, you know what? <laughs> I had an injury, so I got a little time now, so maybe I'll get back out there at the computer and try to get on it again because, it, you know, th- that when you're down and out, sometimes that's the best time to get inspired. Well, we'll be looking forward to that, and thank you so much for being with us to uh, to talk about the books, and hopefully we can do this again. And uh, it's a book that's so well-written and touching. It's literally for the family. A child, uh, a young adult can learn from the book, an eye-opener for other family members, for parents as well. The book is Shadow with a Rainbow. Randa, thank you so much for being with us on the program. I hope you uh, continue to get well from the injury and uh, spend a little time at the uh, computer, and we can talk about book number three in the series. Thank you for being with us. Thank you so much, Rick, and it's been a pleasure talking to you. A pleasure having you here. A very important conversation, important book, Shadow with a Rainbow. Book available, stratton-press.com. You'll also find information on our website, thisweekinamerica.us. We're back on today's program after these messages. This Week in America is online. You can visit our website, thisweekinamerica.us. Scott Pinkerton, associate producer of This Week in America. Jay Anderson, segment producer. Ben Watson, webmaster. Otto Bache, director of engineering and TV production. This Week in America produced and is a trademark of Blue Funk Broadcasting, LLC. For information on all of our guests and to listen to this week's show, our website again at thisweekinamerica.us. And I'm Sean Bratton, executive producer of This Week in America.